You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. I'm guilty of something. (laughs) Actually, I'm guilty of taking a day. That's what I did today. I took a day, and I really didn't overachieve it a whole hell of a lot of anything, except for tonight. I might actually almost kind of, sort of achieve at something tonight on grammy's rocket chair here on real liberty media.com channel three oh no wait oh wow <laughs> flashback channel 10 i have my own channel now booyah um yeah also on the rlm radio.xyz site the uh, rlm tune in radio station rlm internet radio station rlm spreaker channel which if you're listening in on spreaker and you want to chit chat with me please come on over to real liberty media.com think of a nickname Join the chat. Give me some static. I'll give it back to you because main reason I say that is because I got crappy internet. Okay? You're lucky I'm getting out. <laughs> Although they do let me out once in a while. Yeah, I got tin can kite string and a lot, a lot of duct tape. And there's a few spots where there's some Gorilla Glue too. Just pointing that out because I had to, had to, you know, fix a couple things. <laughs> It's that special sauce everybody keeps talking about. You know, and all of this guilty, guilty, guilty stuff. Um, do what? What, what, what? <laughs> I'm going to name the Jew. I am, oh my Lord, heaven forbid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm not. I'm not call Jew names. No, I wouldn't do that to Jew. That's that's. Hey, I work with some Hispanic ladies, and that's actually how she ta- how they talk. But they're wonderful. They're hilarious as hell. Taught one of them a new new English word yesterday, so she was really really excited. Um, no, and yeah, that was Alice Cooper, by the way, for those of you that listened into my little intro before I kicked in the Spreaker. I'm guilty! I couldn't decide what to play, and then I thought, all this Kavanaugh crap is coming, is still. I mean, you know, it's it's like floaters are bobbing to the top. You know, so I gotta, I had to go there, because, you know, okay, he was 17, what, 17, 18, Show me a 17 or 18 year old boy that hasn't done something naughty in his life. And I'll show you someone that has lived a very boring life. (laughs) Uh, Oh, I know, Rob. Static is very potent chit, man. (laughs) Thanks for pointing that out, Rob Works. I do have some potent static... That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, I got to start saying hey to everybody. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everyone. Okay, where do I want to start? I think I'll start over on Twitterville. Twitterville, well, actually, maybe I'll start over here on Fakey Books, since that's the tab I have open. And I see this lovely little meme that my brother, one of my brothers, Dammy Balls, he shared. And it says, when you know you've posted enough truth, and you're just waiting to be taken to Facebook jail. <laughs> He and I have both gotten Facebook timeouts, so yeah, I yeah I relate to that one, hun. It's quite fun, actually, especially when you know you actually intended to. Although his first Facebook timeout was one of those where he went, "What I do? Really, seriously? That's what you? Oh, okay. Well, now I'm going to push the envelope if you don't mind, and even if you do, I'm gonna. So, hi, Boda Danny. I see you over here. I also see Brandon is over here. Brandon! Big shout out. I know you moved out to Colorado, but hey. Hey, dude. How you doing? Um, I also have something I want to share with you as soon as I'm done saying hey to everybody. But, moving along, I'm going to come on over here to Twitter. Thank you, Barman, ever so much for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate it. You is the bot. 
That's just all there is to it. I also, yeah, I refreshed my Twitter, and there it is, the one that I retweeted from Dirty Sanchez. Hey, you dirty little Sanchez. <laughs> yeah, even Hillary got that presidential text. And it said, you're not the popo, I am. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. They've got your name. They've got your number. They've got access to your camera. They've got access to your mic. They've got this. They've got that. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. I already know that. They've had that for a long time. Do you remember Patriot Act? That They pretty much just, you know, publicly gave themselves permission to do that shit. You know, not saying that they weren't doing it before because god knows any technology we have access to you know we as in us little little worker bees any technology we have access to they've had access to for quite some time so just letting you know hun they've had access to that and i've had people tell me you really need to close your facebook account because you know they're spying on you and it's like really uh, and closing my Facebook account will stop that how? <laughs> You're funny. You're really funny. I would drop an F-bomb, but it's entirely too early in the show. And, uh, yeah, I, le I save that for Moose because she's an overachiever in that area. Moose girl, you to bomb when it comes to dropping F-bombs, girlfriend. You can do it like a pro. In any case, over here on Twitter, yeah, pretty much Barman and uh, Grimmy. Thank you, guys. I also saw BB on here earlier today. Hi, BB9. How are you doing, sweetheart? Haven't seen you in the chat in a very, very, very long time. I miss you, hon. Excuse me. I had a little belch there. Um, but, uh, yeah, BB's pretty cool. He's he's a smart feller. But BB also, I think, is, I think he's still doing his podcast this, well, Wednesdays. Wednesdays. So, BB, you could listen in if you wanted to. I don't think you're podcasting right now. And if you are, my apologies, hun. Um, oh, deal with it. What? What? Okay, I see this. Oh, he's still your king whether you voted him in or not. So, stop pro protesting and deal with it, snowflake. <laughs> That's funny. I don't care who you are. That's funny. <clears throat> Uh, you know, uh, mm, I'm just going to move along before I start going off on rants because I have several of them today because I actually listened to some stuff, you know, some things that I found were quite informative, quite entertaining. And one of them was, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, I refreshed Twitter and there's Kavanaugh with somebody set him up with a shitload of beer. Um, <clears throat> moving along over here on realliberty.org. Thank you, Grimner, for sharing over here, letting everybody know I shared what you shared. So that's a double share. Share and share alike. I ain't sharing, sharing. The some swearing. Dun, 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 Okay, moving along. <laughs> I See, I wasn't on Friday night because my daughter was here on her way to Colorado and... and yeah. So we had an evening of, of just bullshitting took her out for supper and um at the winona cafe which is really pretty good we had the sampler stuff and oh yeah i had blotto belly <laughs> it was good huh. in any case it was nice to be able to just have a nice relaxing bullshit session with my daughter so <clears throat> Um, yeah, so I wasn't on Wednesday, so you guys are getting wackadoodle and freak all at the same time, so I hope you can deal, because <laughs> I'm going to try. In any case, over here on realliberty.org, which is where you need to be as well, come on over, join up. It's a lot of fun. It really is. It's not fake book, but it's kind of, sort of, only there's no censorship. You know, you want to put something out there, deal with the repercussions of whatever you just said, hon. That's what, you know, being adult is all about. I know, adulting is hard, but mm, we all got to deal with it. My way of dealing with a lot of that stuff, sometimes I bark back. Sometimes I sit back and laugh because I'm kind of weird like that. You know, I'm one of those people that see people see me smiling, you know, just kind of one of them little half smiles and they go, oh, shit, run. <laughs> 
especially when I get the maniacal laugh going, too. In any case, over here on realliberty.org, I see Rob Works and Cowboy Tech, Bobby Bain, Circle O is still logged in. Cycles, how you doing, lady, over there in Denmark? I'm knitting something new, sweetheart. I'll have to talk to you about that later. Uh, let's see, Java, 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 Java Doctor is also over here, as well as Grimmy. Let's see, did I get everybody? Yeah, I did. Y'all keep changing position on me. Oh, you're having fun. I see how you are. I also see Late In Again was here a little while ago, as well as the lovely Mary B from Down Under. Hey, Mary B. How's things? Um, over here on Minds. Thank you, Real Liberty Media over here on Minds for letting people know that I am on right now. And you know what? I see this lovely little thing. It's a meme with Al Gore. And I'm going to get to this later on. But hey, listen. Just because our data was wrong and our scientists were lying, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't let us tax you for every breath you take and every mile you drive. That should say, and every drive you make, because that way it would go along with that police song. Moving along. Yeah. You know how expensive gas is for my yacht, don't you? Yeah. Shame on you, you dirty breathers. How dare you not want to pay for all of his big old honker mansions and yachts and private jets to go somewhere and blame us little people for, you know, burning all those fossil fuels. Captain Assholio. <gasps> Moving along. Moving along. Over here on Freedom's Network. Thank you once again, Grimner, for letting people know over here that I am live and in poison. In poison. Hey. And you know what? I see In a Perfect World with Flash and Vinny is something going on over here on Real Liberty Media too. How awesome is that? You know what? Grimmy said that his therapist told him to write letters to the people you hate and then burn them. And he said he did that, but now I don't know what to do with the letters. <laughs> That's a good one, Grim. You know, if you do, if you, you know, do some creative hyphenization in that, it's the rapist. You do know that, don't you? They're, they're mind fuckers. Oh, F-bomb. So early in the show. Man, I'm overachieving. Just gotta say. Um, yes, Geraldine. Hi, sweetheart. Geraldine over here on Fakey Book is piping in. Now, what I need to do is get over here to the place where you need to be if you want to give me some static while I'm broadcasting. I might pay attention, I might not. But if my little flasher thingy flashes at me, not flash, you know, with Vinny, but the other, my little IRC icon. If it flashes at me, then I know someone took my name in vain and I'm going to have to smart ass back at him. Because, you know, I'm pretentious and all. <laughs> So, over here in reallibertymedia.com, yeah, I know Grim, Mal or Rob Works, Mouth Breeders, Breathers, Mouth Breeders, wow. <laughs> oh, go back to Stormy Dan Daniels and Mueller, yay. The, you know, I'm just, somebody needs to take a great big bucket of water and just, you know, as someone else pulls a handle, dump that bucket of water. Dump it, because that's the only way you can get those floaters to go down. Seriously, you got to make them go away, because, dude, that's just gross. <laughs> in any case, over here in the RLM, right up top, I see Cal or Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Cowboy Tech, and looky there, Grimner, the RLM god, Cowboy, by the way, love the tent set up. I hope you're still hearing pleasant voices, even if they're out in the middle of nowhere. You know, like someone going, Cowboy, you're awesome. I also see Moose Girl is here as well. And you know what? The Moose and Grimner will be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball. So be sure to check that one out. Oh, it's a new show. First one was on Tuesday. How awesome, Vinny. Calm down. Rob... I don't know how to calm down. <laughs> what you don't see is what you get. That's why I don't do video. Although I did just get my hair done again. <clears throat> Moving along. 
Hi, Kate. The lovely Kate from down in the great state of Florida. I also see Art Underground. Is So, Art, are you underground as in living in one of those, those um, hobbit houses? Or are you underground as in, you know, you're part of the Underground Railroad, kind of that kind of underground? Not necessarily saying Underground Railroad, but underground could mean so many things so many things now i'm curious i also see blm fluke is here we got a blm fluke hmm blm i'll have to think on that one is that the same as the other fluke that was the vanna white of the i'm doing the hand thing now good thing you don't see it because someone that knows hand signals would say what the hell she's saying um i also see chalcedony is here as well as the lovely cycles hi cycles um uh a record oh no that's not a record Vinny. it isn't for my first f-bomb i've said them faster than that but <laughs> okay moving along i'm reading the chat while i'm trying to say hey uh cycles chloe e -E -E. chloe's got extra e's going on I also see Cyborg Noodle is here. May you be touched by his noodly botly goodness. I also, and looky there, Donna or D underscore C. I know, I always want to say Don. I know, it's D underscore C, but it's, hi, Don. Echelon is also here, as well as yours truly, Gromit. Hi, Gromit. How you doing? You know, Gromit, every time I see that, oh, oh BLM is Don. Why, thank you, Rob Works. How cool. I did not know that. Um... Yeah, whenever I see Gromit, I think of a Muppet. I don't know why, but I do. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house, as well as Kozoo. And I still haven't found my kazoo. I may have to go and look in the grandbaby toys that I have stashed away somewhere. Layer 8 is also here, and we got a double pox going on in the chat. Poxified and poxophone. We also got some pompo pompo pom sauce. Um, Art Underground will be doing a show. Sweet! Oh, that's awesome, Grim. Announcement. Art Underground will be doing a show here on the RLM called Straight Talk 101 right after Hal Anthony where Hal opens up a can of whoop-ass on your ass on Sundays. So, booyah! How awesome sauce is that? Way cool. How awesome. Welcome aboard, Art Underground. That will be cool. I will have to make sure, well, I'll try to be home to listen in, but I do have company coming again this weekend, so maybe not this Sunday, but hopefully, my Sundays are hopefully not going to be quite so crazy coming up, because the weather's getting shittier, so, it's coming into winter time. Oh, beginning the 14th? Yay! Thank you, Art Underground. How awesome! That's... Okay, so I won't miss it this Sunday. Okay, booyah! <laughs> That's even more bonus points. Okay, where was I at? Pompo Pompo Pond Sauce. I also see the lovely Rain is here, as well as there's RLM Fluke. There's my Vanna White of the RLM channel. Thank you, RLM Fluke, for letting us know what the weather is doing, even though usually I step outside. Ooh, hiccup again. Step outside and I go, burr, it's cold. Um... Uh, Ow! Fluky, hun, don't be beating up on Rob. Rob does the bubbler. Shame on you. One, two, five, or three. Yeah, yeah, that's Vinny's counting. <laughs> Moving along. Hi, Rob Works. Thank you for firing up the bubbler, hun. I appreciate that, darling. I also see the F Bominator is in the chat. Hey, Skittle. Nobody drops F-bombs like Skittle does. Not even the Moose Girl. Nope. Although Moose, Moose, hun, you're right up there. Vinny is here. Vinny! How sings in Arkansas. Heard any banjos playing lately? Be afford. Don't be bending over when you hear banjos, hun. Just saying. Phantom! Thank you, Phantom. You're so awesome. Phantom is the one that did my intro for me. For those of you that are listening in new... Oh, art was on ucy.tv. Oh, okay. How awesome. Well, that's way cool, Vinny. Yay for art. 
Art, honey, I don't do that kind of show. I kind of rant and ramble and have a lot of squirrel moments and do a lot of giggling. And every once in a while, I drop F-bombs, too. Just saying. I'm I'm not your regular Grammy radio. <laughs> Just saying. Asmo2 is also here. Asmodius Asmo2. Colfax 101, as well as Dakota. I saw their snow up in them thar hills. Saw that earlier today on the radar. Colfax 101, the street out there. Oh, I already said Colfax, didn't I? I think I did. Just an echo. Yoo-hoo. Hi, Frumpy. How you doing? Haven't chitty chatted. You know, I haven't chitty chatted very much with too many people lately. I've been a busy girl. <sighs> one, two, blue, 11. You know, one plus one equals two and one. Never mind. Vinny, you and I could get into those kind of discussions and I would be lost and I'd have tilt flashing on my forehead, which is really nothing. Oh, I'm glad all is well, hun. Ah, uh, JJ's. JJ's that lovely Scottish feller who still hasn't flashed his kilt at me. Shame on you, JJ's. Inquiring minds. <laughs> Sock puppet. Sock has been a busy, busy bee as well. Hey, Sock, how you doing? And looky there, we got Woodrow here. Woodrow, is that you, Woody Meisterbrow? Whom, whomever, or is this another Woodrow? I'm thinking that's probably Woody Meisterbrow, Woody. Woody, Woody, Coody, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, good God. Let's don't be, let's don't be doing no damn false flag shit anymore, okay? Um, <clears throat> yikes. Oh, gross. Okay. I'm, I'm checking over here in the red pill and, oh. Wow, I, I just got a mental image that I really don't want to have. <laughs> Trump spanking that senator from Alaska. Ew, somewhere in there, I think somebody's going to enjoy that. And that's just, I threw up a little bit in the back of my throat. Yeah, thanks, Rome's. I saw that earlier today. I actually read some of it. And yeah, there's going to be an awful lot of people running around panicking and saying, I want a new cell phone that doesn't have that. And someone else is going to do the advertising thing that say it doesn't have that chip in it, but it'll cost you extra. Because, you know, I saw McAfee said that he's got a phone that doesn't have that in there, but it'll cost you extra. I saw that video a long time ago. And yeah, it's real. It's more than an iPhone. Uh, yeah. So... Mm, he's entertaining, he's intelligent, and he's, eh, how much do you want to believe, okay? So, speaking of how much do you want to believe, here we go. Um, little story I got to tell you. While stitching a cut on the hand of a 75-year-old farmer whose hand was caught in the squeeze gate while working cattle, the doctor struck up a conversation with the old man. Now, eventually, the topic got around to politicians and their role as our take-me-to-your-leader. <laughs> See, even way back then, they were programming you to look at them as leaders. Duh. So, the old farmer... Uh, blah, 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 let's start this over again. The old farmer said, well, as I see it, most politicians are post-turtles, as in P-O-S-T. In case I wasn't clear enough on that. They are post-turtles. Not being familiar with the term, the doctor asked him what a post-turtle was. Well, the old rancher said, You know when you're driving down a country road and you come across a fence post with a turtle balanced on top of it? That's a post-turtle. The farmer saw the puzzled look on the doctor's face, and so he continued to explain. You know... He didn't get up there by himself. He doesn't belong up there. He doesn't know what to do while he's up there. He's elevated beyond his ability to function. And you just wonder what kind of dumbass put him up there to begin with. Now that actually is probably the best explanation of a politician that I've ever heard. Yeah. 
So who was the dumbass that put them up there? I think there's quite a few people that need to raise their hand on that one, although they really don't want to admit to the dumbass part, but hey, own it. We all have our own dumbassedness. Even me. There are times when I am just totally dumbassed. Um, <laughs> Truth or UFO over here on, on uh, Twitter. And then I got to get to my articles. Uh, just posted this. The send button should just be called fuck it. Which, yes, it should. Yeah. Just do it. Just do it. You know you want to. You know you want to. Hi, Tom. I see you over here on Fakey Book. Okay. Now, do I wish to? No, I don't want to support any dumbasses being on the Supreme Court. Because I think the Supreme Court should be like pizza on a tennis court. That's a Supreme Court. The other one is just a bunch of grown adults running around going to work in black bathrobes and acting like they know much so much more than the rest of us. When, no, no, you don't. Okay, maybe now you do. But that's because... Yeah, they've done such a splendiferous job of dumbing down the rest of society. So, where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? Um, do I want to start with something funny? Or, I tell you what, let's go with this one. And I think it's, it's an older one. Yeah, it's from May of 2017. But it's from The Economist. And I saw it and I went, how awesome. How cool. No, I don't wish to subscribe. So, it's from TheEconomist.com. As crime dries up, Japan's police hunt for things to do. Yeah, there was just one fatal shooting in the whole of 2015. Now, granted, Japan is a very, very small area. Islands. There are several islands, so that's why I say area. I do know some geography, but, <clears throat> and they do have lots and lots and lots and lots of people living practically on top of themselves, if not on top of each other. But <clears throat> the stakeout lasted a week, but it paid off in the end. The tireless police of Kagoshima, a sleepy city in the far south of the country, watched the unlocked car day and night. It was parked outside a supermarket and contained a case of malt beer. Finally, a passing middle-aged man decided to help himself. Five policemen instantly pounced, nabbed one of the city's few remaining lawbreakers. Japan's cluttered streets are not always pretty, but they are remarkably safe. Crime rates have been falling for 13 years. The murder rate of 0.3 per 100,000 people is among the lowest in the world. In America, it's almost four. And a single gun slaying was recorded for the whole of 2015. Now, even Yakuza gangsters, once a potent criminal force, have been weakened by tougher laws and old age. So... And they do have a little chart here to let you see the numbers per per capita. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yet, far from being pensioned off, the police are growing in numbers. Beat cops, known colloquially as Amawari-san or Mr. Walkaround, are a fixture in most neighborhoods. Japan has over 259,000 uniformed officers. 15,000 more than a decade ago, when crime rates were far higher. Now, the ratio of officers to population is very high, especially in Tokyo, home to the world's biggest metropolitan police force. It's a quarter bigger than the one protecting New York, which it's n the one in New York. Can you really honestly say they're protecting? Usually they show up after the fact, and they, they are getting very good at doing chalk outlines. Just being honest here. 
Now, this means plenty of attention for crimes that would be considered too petty to investigate elsewhere, such as the theft of a bicycle or the possession of a tiny amount of drugs. One woman describes how five officers crowded into her cramped apartment after she reported her kickers or her knickers being swiped from a clothesline and a small army of detectives was assigned last year to apprehend a group of 22 people who had been growing marijuana for their personal use only and smoking it in deserted rural spots. Oh, those demons! How dare they consume the devil's lettuce! Shame, shame, shame. It's a plant, people. Now, in fact, as police run out of things to do, They are becoming more inventive about what constitutes a crime. That's from Kanaka Takayama of Kyoto University. In one recent case, she says, they arrested a group of people who had shared the cost of renting a car, deeming the arrangement an illegal taxi. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Do they have guns? That's probably why there's such a low murder rate. Ours have guns. Now, some prefectures have begun prosecuting people who ride their bicycles through red lights. Gad! In 2015, a man was arrested for scribbling Adolf Hitler's mustaches onto posters of Shinzo Abe, the Prime Minister. Ah, is that how you say that? Shinzo Abe. I probably screwed that up. Now, Ms. Takayama says detectives have started appearing without permission on university campuses to monitor troublesome students. One reason why police are going after cyclists may be to make up for the steady fall in driving offenses. Both drivers and cyclists can avoid fines by signing up for remedial training at certified driving schools, which are often staffed by retired officers. Now, 15 years ago, police in Hokkaido, in Japan's sparsely populated north, conspired with Yakuza gangsters to smuggle guns into the country so that they could meet quotas for finding them. Hmm. Now, the hunt for things to do may sometimes be beneficial. The number of reported cases of children being abused at home has almost doubled since 2010, despite the declining birth rate. That suggests the police are increasingly intervening in the domestic sphere, which they used to avoid. Even critics of Japan's justice system accept that it gets a lot, or gets a lot right. Rates of recidivism, yeah, can I say that again, only say it properly? Rates of recidivism are low, and a great deal of effort is made to keep young offenders out of the prison system. Police work with parents to keep young people on the straight and narrow. Adults are incarcerated at a far lower rate than in most rich countries, 45 per 100,000 compared to 146 in Britain, and, oh, figures, 666 in the United States. Yeah, the Satan of the world. 666. You can't make this shit up. Well, maybe The Economist did, but seriously, it's right there. Yet, the police are oddly inefficient. Even though there are so many officers and so few crimes, they solve less than 30% of them. Confessions, often made under duress, form the basis of most criminal prosecutions. The courts dismissed the case of the beer thief in uh, Kagoshima, despite all of the work that went into it. Japan is almost crime-free, not thanks to the police, says Yoshihiro Yasuda, who is a campaigning lawyer, but because people police themselves. So see, police are trying to get themselves a little bit of job security and prove that they are valuable and they are necessary. And people are just pretty much taking care of it themselves. 
and police are becoming irrelevant and they do not like that. They do not like that. Yes, Rob Works, I agree with you. Dear police, if you have nothing to do, go home. That's what Andy Griffith did. If there was nothing going on, he went home to see what the latest thing was Aunt B cooked up. Because Aunt B was one hell of a cook. She's always cooking something up. Cycles quit. Ah, Cycles. You rest well, dear lady. I know it's it's dark 30 over in your neck of the woods. Way, 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 way late. Let me put this over here on realliberty.org as well. Uh, let's see. Oh, crap. Let's just, there we go. So, post that. I see I got lots of notifications over here on Twitter. Hmm, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I could, I, you know, I really don't give a shit about the Kavanaugh thing anymore. I really don't. It's to the point where it's like, just shut up about it already. Jeez. Okay, now, you know, since I started out in the whole law and order genre, Let's go with another one, shall we? This is one that was posted in the RLM earlier today. I don't remember if it was Grimm or Rob Works that posted it. It's from the freethoughtproject.com. Judge, I will not send people to jail because they keep mysteriously dying. Which Soikles brought up a very valid point on that as well. I saw it as I was going by tending to other business, but eh. On to this story. In Cleveland, Ohio, in the last four months, six inmates inside the uh, Cuyahoga? Yeah. Where do you guys come up with some of these names? Seriously. Uh, in that county jail, they have met with an untimely demise. The suspicious nature of their deaths and the subsequent blocking of information by the jail has one Cleveland judge taking action and refusing to send people to jail who are charged with crimes. Now, Cleveland Municipal Judge Michael Nelson announced this week that he will no longer be sending people to jail unless they are accused of committing horrible crimes because inmates keep turning up dead. So instead of locking them up, Nelson will send set personal bonds for people, meaning that ju the judge will turn people loose on their own accord instead of making them pay bail. The judge reached out to Cleveland.com this week to tell them that he plans on reaching out to the court's administrative judge, Michelle Early, uh, to set up a meeting to figure out why so many inmates are dying. Now, the first thing I did this morning when I saw the Cleveland.com story is look to see if it was someone that I sent to jail, Nelson said. And I'm giving personal bonds to everyone from now on unless they're the worst of the worst until things get figured out at that jail. Now, Early told Cleveland.com via an email statement that she has set up a meeting with the jail officials to get to the bottom of this string of deaths. You, you know somebody is being political when they say, I have set up a meeting with so-and-so to get to the bottom of this whatever, whatever, whatever. You know they're earnest. Or maybe not. Maybe they're just early. Now, both the warden of the county jail and the chief of public safety for Cuyahoga County have agreed to meet with me so that the court can get a better understanding of what is going on with the jail. What has happened in these situations and what plans the jail has or will implement to prevent further inmate deaths in the facility? Now, the most recent death involved 44-year-old Martin Gomez, who died just four days after being booked. Gomez was thrown in jail for possession, 
or for possessing less than five grams of cocaine. He couldn't afford the $150 bail to get out of jail, and four days later, he was found dead. So adding a shroud of mystery to Gomez's death is the fact that the county officials have refused to release any details as to how he died. Possibly because there is an ongoing investigation and we never discuss ongoing investigations. Did I sound officious enough? Now a county spokesperson, or as this says, spokeswoman, but that's not being very gender sensitive. It should be a spokesperson. Now, Mary Louise Madigan would not say when Gomez was taken to the hospital or the circumstances surrounding the death. That's according to Cleveland.com. So had Gomez come across Judge Nelson, he may still be alive today. After the judge announced that he would start refusing to send people to jail, the county announced that it will hire an outside investigator to look into the six inmates who died in four months. Yeah, now we're going to do something. Now that you're no longer sending us more fodder. The county issued a statement Wednesday noting that the county ex um, executive Armand Bud uh, Budish's administration, county executive Armand Budish's administration will ask the county council to approve funding for the independent expert to investigate the jail's entire operation, including the downtown justice center, the Euclid and Bedford jails. This is according to Cleveland.com. So, see, they say that they're going to hire someone to look into it. But first, they've got to get with this person who's got to set up a meeting with this group so that they can go in and ask for permission to spend some more funding. Yeah. Can you say 18 months down the road? Minimum? I think you can. Apparently, we are very concerned about the recent deaths in the county jail, the statement said. So while each situation is individual and we are still in the process of investigating the cause of each inmate's death, there is a common thread. Each death occurred in our county jail system. Wow, I'm thinking that's bigger than a thread, hon. That's like a big old honking cable. You know, one of them big old honkers that they put on those... Uh, Bridges, you know, like the Golden Gate Bridge. One of them big-ass cables. It's not a common thread. Well, as the Free Thought Project has reported, hundreds of people die in jail every year across the country. So while this number is certainly shocking, what's even more shocking is the fact that over 75% of them were never convicted of a crime, meaning that they were too poor to pay the bail and died waiting to see a judge. Now the details behind these deaths are largely unknown and in most cases the blame is put on the inmate. Well, why not? He can't refute it. Yeah, either for health reasons or alleged suicide. How about you just say Arkansas and get it over with? According to one report, of the 12,623 deaths reported in local jails from 2000 to 2012, only 3,105 of them were actually convicted of a crime. The other 9,518 inmates were never found guilty before dying in their cages. If they extrapolate these numbers out to days, on average, two people die in jail every single day who've never been found guilty of a crime. That in itself is a crime against humanity, in my personal opinion. Now, perhaps Judge Nelson will raise awareness to the fact that not everyone accused of a crime needs to be thrown in jail. Those who haven't committed violent crimes or who are accused of traffic offenses and traffic offenses. Seriously, those are money generators. Revenue. May as well call the guys with the little ticket pads revenueers. 
ooh, and other state-related victimless crimes, yeah, they would most likely benefit from not being thrown in a cage. Yeah, so, you know, if you happen to have, like, a weed in, in your pocket, heaven forbid you go to a health food store and buy some organic oregano, you could spend the rest of your life in prison, which, if you're in Ohio, that may not be really that long. <sighs> That's just disgusting. It really is. And uh, kudos to the judge for saying, nah, ain't sending them there. No more. What is that Darwin's Law? Oh, Rob works. Um, oh, Woodrow's going off to Dylan. Yay, Vinny! You got me on the droid? Droid. Droid. Uh, let me check this out. So, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one a lot, Rob. Thank you. Okay, let me see here. Mm. Okay. Back to my pocket I go. Oh, wait a minute. I need to put that in realliberty.org too, don't I? Oh, Lord. Thanks, Aunt. That's a rather troubling pick that you just posted over here on realliberty.org. Can't generate image from given string. Hmm. Shock, shock. Here come the judge. Here come the judge. Okay. Back to my pocket I go. Hi ho, hi ho. I'm back to the pocket I go. Now let's go to something even more asinine. And this, yeah, you know, you got the prison system, you got county jails, and then you got the school system. That really isn't a whole hell of a lot different. It's just prepping you. So you're not so shocked when you get sent to county jail or the big house. This is from the college fix dot com it's from a couple days ago or it was posted a couple days ago school districts send chi or sent child services after mother when she reported restroom assault by gender fluid student now you know back in my day i know the language morphs and changes but back in my day gender fluid was pretty sticky <laughs> So, you know, when you use a term like or a phrase like gender fluid, I have to giggle. I'm sorry, because, you know, we called that jizz back in the day. Okay. <laughs> so this jizz student, I know you guys are all trying to be so PC. Stop it already. Okay. You're warping your own mind. Now, <clears throat> This falsely claimed federal law required the policy months after guidance was rescinded. So, a Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights is investigating a school district whose transgender restroom policy allegedly, allegedly, led to a sexual assault of a five-year-old girl. In a September 14th letter to Bernadette Broyles, the lawyer representing the unnamed student, the OCR's Atlanta office said it would investigate Georgia's Decatur City School District for whether it failed to provide a prompt and equitable response to the sexual assault report creating a sexual, sexually hostile environment for the girl. Now, I'm sorry, but when you're talking five-year-old girl and sexually hostile environment all in the same paragraph, I'm thinking some heads need to roll. 
As part of the inquiry, it will consider whether the transgender policy's implementation created or contributed to the creation of the hostile environment for all girls. The office is also investigating whether the school district retaliated against the girl's mother for reporting the incident. Shock, shock. Slander, smear. Hmm, that does come from the Alice Alinsky book, doesn't it? Saul Alinsky? That's usually how they handle such things. Now, the complaint claimed that a gender fluid student or a jizz student, I'm just shortening it, who is biologically male had entered the girls' restroom in accordance with the school district policy that lets students use intimate facilities in accordance with their gender identity and then sexually assaulted the girl. That's according to the OCR letter. So, not only do several aspects of the policy create a hostile environment for girls, but the school district retaliated against the girl's mother by reporting her to the Georgia Division of Family and Children's Services as the responsible party. The original complaint filed jointly by Broyles and the Alliance Defending Freedom in May said that the school district imposed the preference policy in May of 2016. Now at that time the Obama administration's transgender restroom policy for public schools had just been issued, albeit without legal authority. If you believe in, you know, it's that belief in authority. Remember, there's a lie in the middle of belief, be life. The Decatur policy said that all schools must allow students to enter whichever restroom, locker room, and shower they prefer, and even to sleep with the opposite, opposite sex on overnight school trips. Now, wait a minute here. Even to sleep with the opposite sex. So gender and sex are completely different things. Or am I just reading that into this? Superintendent David Dude misled parents, the complaint alleges, by telling the media that its existing policy accommodating transgender students in single occupant restrooms would continue. Meanwhile, he told staff in an email that a male who identifies as female should be allowed to use whichever facilities he prefers, including overnight stays. A male identifying as a female should be allowed to use whichever facilities he prefers. Now, not until February 27th of 2017, more than half a year after he had issued his directive to the staff, did Superintendent Dude first disclose the policy, including the language quoted above, to the public, and then only through a blog post on his Facebook page, rather than through any of the normal channels used to communicate information and notices to parents. Now, Dude kept the policy in place despite Trumple Stilskin's administration's rescission of the federal guidance, which federal guidance is not a law. It is not a regulation. It's a guidance. It's like, do you want to have a guide dog? If you can see, you don't need one, you so let it go. I know, that's squirrely. Well, <clears throat> apparently it had already been suspended by a federal court anyway. So, opponents of the policy warned Dude for five months before the restroom attack that it violated girls' Title IX rights and physical safety. But the Board of Education formalized the policy anyway. So, um, according to the complaint... The gender fluid boy, jizz boy, entered the girls restroom at Oakhurst Elementary School in November of 2017 when the girl was in there alone. She'd been excused from class to use the restroom and he asked to be excused as well. 
Now, as the girl walked out of the stall, the boy pushed her against the wall, pushed his hand between her legs, and repeatedly felt and poked her genitals. There is a redacted part in here. And while she struggled and called out for him to stop, no one came to help, the complaint alleges. Now, administrators had been notified that the boy was jizz, <clears throat> excuse me, gender fluid, before the alleged assault, and kept the policy in place even after the incident. The girl told her mother, who then complained to school officials. They refused to reassign the boy out of the daughter's class and even suggested removing the girl from the class because, well, you know, it's her fault that she had to go pee and he had to go pee too and she, she just shouldn't have, been, she shouldn't have been dressed like that. Oh, I know. Here we go. Now, one official said that the boy was never questioned about the incident, and the school also never offered any counseling or other supportive services to the girl. Superintendent Dude has gone out of his way to avoid the girl's mother, the complaint claims, and Principal Marcy Fowler falsely told her that the school district was required by federal mandate to keep the policy in place. That's 10 months after Trumpel Silskin's administration rescinded the non-binding guidance. Now, the most explosive allegation concerns the school district's response to the mother's complaint. It appears that Oakhurst Elementary School leadership contacted the Georgia DFCS and reported that a potential sexual assault had taken place in the school restroom, but inexplicably identified the mother as the responsible party. So as a result of this baseless accusation by the school, DFCS personnel visited the mother's home, interviewed her young children apart from their mother, and contacted family and friends of the victim, inflicting further emotional distress on the victim and the entire family. Unsurprisingly, DFCS found no grounds for any further investigation of the mother or her family. It looks like the school district sought to retaliate against a low-income African-American single mother and intimidate her into silence by sending the Department of Family and Child Services to her door to interrogate her children and inspect her home. So, the policy turns solely on a student's self-declared and perhaps fluid identity without any requirement of certification by a psychiatrist or other physician. So quite aside from students who may be in the, a difficult process of sorting out their understandings of sex and gender, I'm thinking this is f fucking elementary school. Seriously, people? Child abuse, when you start telling children that you can be gender fluid when they're freaking three, four, five, six, seven years old, they are still trying to figure shit out. Don't be pressing your weird-ass nonsense on them. And yes, I am calling it weird-ass nonsense. Just because you're confused, Captain Cornholio, doesn't mean that you need to be confusing the whole entire next generation. Judas Priest. In any case, back to this article. Hmm. Girls and parents may reasonably fear the risk of simply misbehaving boys who may take advantage of blurred rules as to who is allowed in which restroom in order to intentionally violate the privacy of girls. Creative efforts by adolescent boys to spy on girls while they are undressing is no new thing in this world. No, it's not. But you're talking about adolescent boys. I'm talking about a five-year-old girl. An elementary school girl. Those are not adolescents. It also deprives the girls and their parents notice that a boy who identifies as a girl may use their facilities at any time. 
The complaint responds to a common rebuttal that schools can simply create individual stalls or changing areas within common intimate areas. Have you ever been into a frickin' bathroom? Do the stalls go all the way to the floor? Odds are they do not. Inventive little boys or girls can either climb over or look under. Christ, I remember school. You were out of toilet paper in the stall over. You had enough room to stick your hand and give them some toilet paper from your stall. Mm. Now, the girls' restroom indicator schools have individual stalls in varying degrees of repair. Based on conversations with students, some of the stall walls have holes in them where screws have fallen out or doors that do not close tightly. Locker rooms have common changing areas. Showers in the locker room of Decatur High School are individual, but with only curtains separating them from the common space. So as a result of the policy, a girl in the Decatur schools changing in the locker room or stepping out of the shower after an athletic practice or adjusting her clothes in front of the mirror in a restroom must simply accept the possibility that a male may appear in front of her or behind her when either or both are dressed or undressed. The likelihood that such situations will cause fear and anxiety is obvious. Even assuming absolutely no ill intent on the part of the male student. <sighs> I, once again, I say, five-year-old, five-year-old, fondled by someone else in the school. What the hell? is wrong with you people. Uh. Let's see here. Oh, good for you, Jeff Bezos. Yay, yay, yay. I don't think we've been to the moon and I don't think they'll do it. There, I put that out there again. Um, put this over here on realliberty.org. That's just, that is infuriating to me. It's bad enough that you introduce all this gender fluid shit to little ones like that anyway. I mean, cry many Christmas, my grandsons used to love to play dress up. Hell, they still do for Halloween and shit. That doesn't mean that they think they're girls. They know they're boys. They just like to play dress up sometimes. No big freaking deal. They're little kids. Let them play. Don't be all of a sudden going, oh my God, he must be a girl trapped in a boy's body. Now we got to make special rules for him. No, you don't. hell okay that one just really fr freaking irritated me so now that I've been sufficiently irritated <laughs> let's find something that's not quite so infuriating maybe almost kind of sorty how about how about we go to good old Al Gore I, it will give me a laugh because I have a sick and demented sense of humor I would just as soon go there. Okay. So, this is from humansarefree.com. Can you guess how much CO2? that mankind is responsible for? You know, global warming, climate change, those alarmists harp on about the dangerously high man-made CO2 output levels. So how much are they? 
And you might be shocked to find out. So you would think that man-made CO2 output levels must be sky high, given all the relentless guilt-tripping propaganda that we're fed about how humanity is causing global warming with CO2 outputs. Yeah, humanity, or a select few, is causing it. It's called geoengineering. It's called chemtrails. Now, the agenda to push AGW, or anthropogenic, anthropogenic global warming, or man-made global warming, started around the 1980s. Back in the 1920s, it was global cooling. Now it's global warming because, well, Mother Nature is going through the change, don't you know? And so the temperature regulator is just a little wonky. But, you know, this whole climate change thing, it has been gaining momentum for decades and fooling many, 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 many people along the way. So, did you know that Al Gore made nearly $200 million from the global warming scam? Yeah. So, despite all the publicity it's gotten, it still failed to make clear the very fundamental point. Exactly how much and what percentage of carbon, or specifically CO2 or carbon dioxide, does humanity contribute to the atmosphere? Well... If a man is really driving global warming, you know, which is now called climate change, surely this level must be pretty high or at least significant, right? Well, the answer may shock you and give a whole new meaning to the term global warming hoax. Because one of the difficult things about ascertaining the truth in the climate change debate is that there are so many different sets of measurements. Which one do you trust? How can you tell the truth when one side uses one set of data to prove its point and the other side uses another set of data to prove its diametrically opposite point? Well, to bypass this dilemma, we're going to get the figures straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, by using data from the IPCC, or Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The IPCC is not a scientific body, as you may imagine, but rather a political one, with a very clear bias toward promoting AGW. Yeah, that whole man-made climate change. It's their job to push the AGW agenda onto the public. Even though they discuss that with claims that they provide rigorous and balanced scientific information. So what Wim Rost had to say on his article, IPCC is not science, it is government. The workers in the IPCC prepare the work in accordance with the rules and procedures established by the IPCC. So in order to be scientific, the scientific method has to be adhered. And the use of many scientists to fill important parts of IPCC reports does not mean that everything is science. A report is just a report. And in this case, a report from the IPC, and the IPC is intergovernment. Now, scientists involved can produce their own scientific papers about their own specialized part of the science, but a small group of writers writes the summaries and the conclusions for the IPCC. Now, the IPCC's stated mission is not to discover what accounts for climate change, but to assess the risk of human-induced climate change. Once again, geoengineering slash chemtrails. That's human-induced climate change. Consequently, there is almost no discussion in its lengthy reports of other theories of climate change. Now, policymakers and journalists took this to mean that AGW theory was the only credible theory of climate change, and the IPCC sponsors and spokespersons had no incentive to correct the mistake. 
So, the CO2 in the atmosphere. Here are the simple facts. Earth's atmosphere consists of the following gases at the following levels. Nitrogen is 78%. Oxygen, 21%. Argon, 0.9%. Trace gases, 0.1%. So far, so good. CO2 is a gas in such small concentrations that, hasn't, that it hasn't yet uh, entered the picture. So the next step is to break down the composition of the trace gases, which are also the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Now water vapor, H2O, is 95% of trace gases and 0.95% of the overall atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is 3 or yeah, 3 to 4% of trace gases or 0.03 or 0.4% of the overall atmosphere. Neon is 0.1% of trace gases or 0.001% of the overall atmosphere. Now there are also some gases at tiny concentrations including helium, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone, as well as um, halogenated gases, or CFCs, released by mankind, which have damaged ozone, which I still would like to know how the hell CFCs damage the ozone layer when CFCs are heavier than the air, and how did they, if they're heavier than the air, how did they get up there to the ozone layer? Now, water vapor is far and away the largest greenhouse gas. But the IPCC chose to ignore it. And there are tables below where you can see that water vapor is excluded from the percentages. The IPC and other AGW proponents claim that they need to exclude water vapor from their calculations because it varies so much from region to region. Okay, I get that. And yeah, it does vary greatly all over the earth. But to just exclude the largest greenhouse gas and a massive driver of temperature as well from your calculations because it's inconvenient or varies too much is grossly misleading and very unscientific. So, what is humanity's contribution to CO2 levels? Well, to recap, Trace gases are 0.1% of the atmosphere, and carbon dioxide makes up 3 to 4% of these trace gases. So therefore, CO2 is 3 to 4% of 0.1%. So for simplicity's sake, let's call it 3%. So CO2 compromises 0.003% of the atmosphere. That's pretty damn small. But we can't stop there because the next question to ask is, how much of this is caused by human activity? Well, the IPCC has conflicting sets of data here, but both are within a small range of each other. So it's either 3% using the 2007 figures or 3.6% using the 2001 figures. So, no matter which set of data you use, the IPCC data shows that man-made CO2 output levels are at less than 3%. So how do you figure this out? Well, the 2001 data shows the total amount of CO2 going into the atmosphere, which is 119 plus 88 plus 6.3, which equals 213.3, and the human portion is 6.3. So you divide 6.3 by 213.3 and you get 2.95%. That's 2.95% of the total CO2 volume. The 2007 data shows the total amount of CO2 going into the atmosphere, which is 29 plus 
439 plus 332 equals 800, and the human portion is 29. So divide 29 by 800, and you get 3.63%. Okay? So, bottom line is, according to the IPCC's own data, man-made CO2 output levels are 3% of 3% of 0.1% of the total Earth's atmosphere. That's 0.00009%, or 9 millionths of the atmosphere. So, CO2 is measured in parts per million because it's such a tiny and insignificant gas. Yet somehow, the propaganda has been so successful that it has sprouted into what some state is a $1.5 trillion industry. Now, the IPC, they just plain, plain can't deal with water vapor. Yeah. It's basically stuck on water vapor. It can't actually measure it, since the variability across the world is so high. CO2 vapor changes so quickly, and it takes place above a variety of different landscapes and topographies. So there are too many variables to calculate to produce a good model. So it just shuffles it to the side and states it has no confidence. So you want to know exactly what the IPC says? Well... Modeling the vertical structure of water vapor is subject to greater uncertainty since the humidity profile is governed by a variety of processes. Because of large variability and relatively short data records, confidence in stratospheric H2O vapor trends are low. It doesn't suit the IPCC's agenda to really dive in and better understand the role of water vapor as the key greenhouse gas driving climate temperature. It's far easier to just pretend that it doesn't exist and only focus on the tiny amount of CO2 in the atmosphere instead. Now the idea that man-made CO2 output levels is a big problem in the scheme of all of Earth's eco-problems is a giant hoax. It diverts environmentalist attention away from the true issues that need addressing. So does it make any logical sense to spend so much money, energy, and attention on nine millionths of a percent of CO2? When there are very palpable, tangible, and dangerous threats to our environment. So what about geoengineering? The aer aerial chemtrail spraying of barium, aluminum, and strontium all over us, and the flora and fauna of the Earth. What about the release of synthetic self-aware fibers that cause Morgellons disease, in line with the New World Order synthetic agenda? What about unstoppable environmental genetic pollution caused by the release of GMOs? What about the contamination of waterways with industrial chemicals, pesticides like glyphosate and atrazine, poisons like dioxin and DDT, heavy metals and pharmaceutical residuals? Why are people wasting their energy on 3% of 3% of 0.1% when we have real massive environmental issues facing us as a species. Now, there's a respected theoretical physicist, uh, Freeman Dyson, says that the possibly harmful climatic effects of carbon dioxide have been greatly exaggerated. The benefits clearly outweigh the possible damage. So the final thoughts on this is despite all the politicians, celebrities, and soul-for-sale scientists AGW has recruited to its cause, there's no real basis for the fear-mongering. At the very top, those pushing the man-made global warming hoax know it's a scam. So rather than focusing on the facts, 
They appeal to emotion with fake images of starving polar bears to arouse anger and underwater cities to arouse fear. The truth is that the Green Movement has long been hijacked by the very same New World Order manipulators who helped to ruin the environment in the first place. Through their ownership of oil, chemical, and pharmaceutical multinational corporations. These manipulators rely on the average person being too busy or lazy to check the facts or think critically. They promote scientific illiteracy via their control of the MSM or corporate lame-ass propaganda system. They also control the educational curriculum and their numerous think tanks. Think tanks Think of um, intestinal tract. That's about all they're good for. Finally, if you dare, dig into the birth of the modern environmental movement and you may be shocked to find how deeply it is steeped in eugenics and depopulation. It's time to realize that those pushing this gigantic scam aren't interested in saving the environment, but rather depopulating it. Yeah. In other words, a bunch of hooey. You dirty breathers, you. Yes, Grimmy. <laughs> have you had chili? I have chili. <laughs> that creates lots of greenhouse gas. Okay. Um, let's see. Post this over here on RLO as well. Yep, y'all are free to come to your own conclusions, form your own opinions, and I have gotten to the point where it's like, you know, I'm not going to own a certain opinion, because quite frankly, I change my opinion on things more often than I change my underwear, and that gets done daily. So, you know... <laughs> I know that's kind of a mental image that you really didn't need to have, but it's one of those things where you just want to go, come on, people. Did you not take any science classes in school? I know I did, but that was way back in the day, way before the uh, Department of Education, hmm, which has done nothing but make our children dumber. And parents allowed it. You didn't work with your kids with doing homework and all that fun shit. Stop abdicating your responsibility, parents. Oh. Uh, okay. Bunch of hooey. Kahui at Chewy. So, now that I've done that one, where do I want to go next? I have one that's really, really, really funny, but I don't know that I would be able to make it all the way through it without just laughing my freaking ass off. Damn, it is really close to the end. I didn't realize it was getting that late. I may just have to try this anyway. Now, I am going to go ahead and uh, post it in the chat so y'all can read along if you wish to because um, someone else started me down this little path um, so 
A man recounts his story of testing his wife's taser on himself. Now, I do believe I may have read this a couple years back because I know I've seen it over on PIGazette.com. But it is worth a reread. I read it the other day to my daughter. And we both had tears. (laughs) So... This is hopefully a real story told by Elvisville, Mississippi man, Tony Welsh, who decided to test a taser he bought his wife on himself. Now, I hate to tell you this, but it's probably not a real story, but hey, inventive that he is. The taser in question was a supposedly 100,000 volt pocket sized taser powered by two AAA batteries, which he suspected wouldn't be powerful enough. And he was wrong. So... According to Tony Welsh, which he posted this, I'm not sure where, January 1st of 2017. Last weekend, I saw something at a gun show that sparked my interest. I was looking for a little something different for my wife, Dana. What I came across was a 1,000 volt pocket slash purse sized taser. Now, the effects of the taser were supposed to be short lived with no long term adverse effects on your assailant allowing her adequate time to retreat to safety. Way too cool! Long story short, I bought the device and brought it home. I loaded two AAA batteries in the darn thing and pushed the button. Nothing. I was disappointed. And uh, I learned, however, that if I push the button and press it against a metal surface at the same time, I'd get a blue arc of electricity darting back and forth between the prongs. Awesome! Unfortunately, I have yet to explain to Dana uh, what that burn spot is on the face of her microwave. Okay, so I was home alone with this new toy, thinking to myself that it couldn't be all that bad with only two AAA batteries, right? So there I sat in a pair of shorts and a singlet with my reading glasses perched delicately on the bridge of my nose. Directions in one hand and taser in the other. The direction said that a one second burst would shock and disorient your assailant. A two second burst was supposed to cause muscle spasms and a major loss of bodily control. And a three second burst would purportedly make your assailant flop on the ground like a fish out of water. Any burst longer than three seconds would just be wasting the batteries. So all the while, I was looking at this little device, measuring about five inches long, less than three quarters of an inch in circumference, loaded with two itsy bitsy AAA batteries. Pretty cute, really, and thinking to myself, (laughs) no possible way. Well, what happened next is almost beyond description, but I'll do my best. I'm sitting there alone, the cat looking on, with his head cocked to one side, so as to say, Don't do it, stupid. You know, reason, reasoning that a one-second burst from such a tiny little old thing couldn't hurt all that bad, I decided to give myself a one-second burst just for the heck of it. <laughs> I touched the prong to my naked thigh, pushed the button, and... Holy mother of God! <laughs> Weapon of mass destruction? What the holy... I'm pretty sure Hulk Hogan ran in through the side door, picked me up in the recliner, then body slammed us both on the carpet over and over and over again. I vaguely recall waking up on my side in the fetal position with tears in my eyes, body soaking wet, both nipples on fire, testicles nowhere to be found, and my left arm tucked under my body in the oddest position, and tingling in my legs. Now the cat was making mewing sounds I'd never heard before, clinging to a picture frame above the fireplace, obviously in an attempt to avoid getting slammed by my body flopping all over the living room floor. Now note, if you ever feel compelled to mug yourself with a taser, one note of caution. There's no such thing as a one-second burst when you zap yourself. 
you will not let go of that thing until it dislodges from your hand by the violent flashing on the floor. A three-second burst would be considered conservative. A minute or so later, and I really can't be sure as time was a relative thing at that point, I collected my wits, what little I had left, sat up and surveyed the landscape. My bent reading glasses were on top of the TV. The recliner was upside down and about eight feet or so from where it originally was. My triceps, right thigh, and both nipples <laughs> were still twitching. My face felt like it had been shot up with Novocaine, and my bottom lip weighed 88 pounds. I had no control over the drooling. Apparently, I had crap <laughs> I'd maintained until here. I think I did pretty good. I'd crapped my shorts, but was too numb to know for sure. <laughs> and, <laughs> and my sense of smell was gone. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a faint smoke above my head, which I believe came from my hair, and I'm st <laughs> I'm still looking for my testicles, and I'm offering a significant reward for their safe return. <laughs> P.S. My wife can't stop laughing about my my experience, loved the gift, <laughs> and now regularly threatens me with it. So. <clears throat> <coughs> yeah I thought I did good because I couldn't make I made it way farther this time of course I just read it a couple days ago but yeah I do believe I have read that over on the pig before but yeah <laughs> I could see someone doing that and I actually do have one of those little pocket tasers it's got two little uh, prongs that stick out little plastic prongs that you know so you could gouge their eyes out as well if you want to but I have one of those and there have been <laughs> occasions where I thought I wonder if that's still good I don't want to do like a nine volt you know nine volt battery you can stick your tongue on it and get that little zap and you know it's still good I'm not doing that with that taser <laughs> I'm just not but yeah I thought that was extremely amusing. Sorry for not giggling more or for giggling so much during the reading. But yeah, I, I enjoyed that immensely. And I still have um, a tear leaking out of my eye. <sighs> um... Okay, I am, you know what, it's getting late enough. I'm going to check and see what uh, is going on over on the pig real quick. See what happened this date in history. Oh, looky there, Reality 101. Dialogue is a noun. It's a two-way rhetorical street where your lane has been closed off, putting you on the receiving end of a liptard, victimist, or holy roller diatribe. Hmm, why does that not surprise me? Now, the pig's word for the day is pleasers. These are notoriously thin-skinned individuals who shrivel when criticized, and they have an obsessive craving to be liked, even if it means dumping their core principles. Pleasers, I don't know if they even have core principles. Just saying. In the quotable quotes section, this confirmation process has become a national disgrace. The Constitution gives the Senate an important role in the confirmation process. But you have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. That's from Brett Kavanaugh. You know, just because I really don't give a shit doesn't mean that, you know, some of this, he does raise some valid points. But I still say to you, um, Patriot Act. He may not have been the original writer, but he definitely had a hand in it when it was enacted. And uh, what was it I kept saying? Fourth Amendment. Fourth Amendment. But he... Fourth Amendment. As if any of that shit really counts. Is that just a little... Hey, guess what? We're going to write these really flowery words to make you think that you actually have rights that we're going to protect. 
<laughs> You're so funny. In the Tasty Tidbits section, Southern Humor. A guy from Alabama passed away and left his entire state to his beloved wife, but she can't touch it till she's 14. Yeah, and y'all are going all wonky on Muslims. Not that they're, they are without sin either. You know, there's, there's people that commit <clears throat> acts that are just plain not cool of every walk of life. Deal with it. So, how do you know when you're staying in a Mississippi hotel? When you call the front desk and say, I've got a leak in my sink. And the clerk replies, go ahead. Okay. These are just dumb. So I'm just going to move along. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not impressed with them. If you want to read them all, just go on over to PIGazette.com. They're right there in the Tasty Tidbits. Although there was a new law just recently passed in Mississippi. When a couple gets divorced, they're still cousins. Family's family, don't you know. This date in history, the 5th of August, 1892. The Dalton Gang has a very bad day at the office when four of the five members of the gang who tried to rob a Coffeyville, Kansas bank were killed in the process. This date in history, the 5th of October, 1970. One year after the BBC showcases outrageous Brit humor by airing Monty Python's Flying Circus, Americans respond with a dose of Yankee mirth called PBS. Yeah. <clears throat> Not funny. This date in history, the 5th of October, 1974, Bored slacker named David Kunst finishes 14,450-mile walk around the world. Wow. Wow. I'm thinking not slacker, overachiever. Or maybe you're doing the psychologically reversing shit on me there, boys. And finally, this date in history, the 5th of October, 1991, New Mexico's gridiron warriors never know what hit them when Fresno State ties an NCAA record with 49 points in a quarter on the way to a 94-14 route. Wow, that's a skunk. That is a skunk. There's all kinds of fun little tasty tidbits and silliness over here on PIGazette.com. Come on over and say hey to Hambo and Porkus. I'm sure they will say hey back or possibly go, hey, they know Grammy. Just move along. Pl pretend like you didn't see them. It really is quite possible that they'll do that. So, um, okay. You know what? I pretty much covered everything that I'd stuck in my pocket and all that other fun. Happy hootie ha. Let me see if maybe I need to. Yeah, I know. Facebook's latest hack attack doesn't just affect the social network. Also, Tinder, Spotify, Instagram, Messenger, and Airbnb. Woo-hoo. Oh, I know. Here we go. Here we go. I put this in my pocket for Wednesday. And I didn't get around to it because I didn't do a show on Wednesday. So it's from giveitlove.com. These are hilarious answers or kid answers to test questions. Learning new, fascinating, and sometimes boring facts in school is a rather daunting task. And if you really think about it, Kids have to be prepared to learn new things every day and then regurgitate that information in the form of test answers. Now, sometimes kids nail their tests and other times they provide answers that are wrong but worth a few points just because of the humor that they bring to our lives. So here are some absolutely correct but wrong text, test answers that will have you rolling on the floor. Sometimes brutal honesty is the best answer. So, fill in the solutions. The directions are read each of the problems and come up with a solution for each one. Now, the problem is 
you fell on the playground and scratched your knee. The solution is, get up and deal with it. I like this, kid. That kid may not have scored any points on their test, but their outlook on life is strong. And we have a feeling that this young kid will end up living the life of a startup entrepreneur. Even if they didn't score 100% on their test, they're destined to be real go-getters later in life. Good job, kiddo. We give you an A on this one. So how about this one? Name, Frankie. I earn money at home by... I don't. I'm a freeloader. Well, thanks for being so honest, Frankie. He doesn't mince words. At least we know exactly where we stand on finding a job and supporting ourselves. Hopefully, his attitude will change in the future and pick up a job or two. But in the meantime, enjoy your free ride, kid. It won't last forever. Now, this is a, one of those things where you have to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. So... And it looks like the link is like, I hope it's not ginormous. Beer drinking fish. You know, I've actually seen beer drinking fish. Okay. Moving along. So, before you read, some atoms share electrons and become more stable. Describe the situ or a situation in which people share something and everyone benefits. <laughs> and this child's answer, communism. Oh, somebody really, really, really needs to, mm, no. So, and their comment is, okay, so maybe on a base level, this statement is true. You know, and Bernie Sanders might argue that democratic socialism is a better answer. <clears throat> In any case, the kid wasn't exactly wrong. I mean, if you live in a commune and everybody shares, but you put that ism behind it and it just goes wonky. It'd be a shame if his teacher marked him down for a rather direct answer, which, yeah, and, you know, I'd like to know who his parents are. Um, so... Uh, this teacher apparently received a lesson in English. It says, uh, use commands to tell your sister to do the following things. And apparently this child is learning Espanol. And uh, instead of actually responding to the little Espanol that he is supposed to tell his sister, he just responded, I don't have a sister. Teacher took away seven points for that. Shame on you, teach. Damn it. Just being honest. Now, how about this one? Child, the question was, what ended in 1896? And the child's answer? 1895. Duh. Um, or how about this one? A math question. It has right, and it has either less than or greater than, but it says right or, apparently. So the child wrote 0.5 or 1.0. Now, I'm thinking this child is going to grow up to be a climatology scientist. I, I can just, I'm predicting that right now. Or maybe that was one of theirs. So, how about this one? Name six animals which live specifically in the Arctic. Two polar bears and, th and four seals. <laughs> well, yeah. That, I mean, yeah. He got the math part right. Or she. Whomever. Technically, it's correct. How about this one? What are three things you want to do in the future? Um, I'm going to assume this is a little boy. Because the first thing is, get a girlfriend. Second thing is, kiss her. And uh, the third thing is, rule the world. I wonder if this was little Donald Trumpy Stillskins. <laughs> he had several girlfriends. Married quite a few. Oh, well, moving along. So... Um, 
The water of the Earth's oceans stores lots of heat. An engineer designed an ocean liner that would extract heat from the ocean's water at TH equals 10 degrees centigrade or 283 Kelvin and reject heat to the atmosphere at T to the first power equals 20 centigrade or 293 K. Is that right? Whatever. So he thought he had a good idea, but his boss fired him. Explain why. Um, and the kid said, because he slept with the boss's wife. <laughs> well, Jonathan, is this what, do you know this from like family kind of things? Mm. I have no idea on that question. I did not take anything like that in school. So, how about this one? Um, a point moving through space is a line. An enclosed area that has height, width, and volume is a farm. The lightness or darkness of an object is, or of an object is, the value. Well, maybe that is form. Uh, the way something actually feels or looks to feel, and you can't really read that one. An enclosed area that has height and width is a shape, and draw a shape, which um, he drew a circle. And then question number 10, that he got wrong, but the teacher thought it was clever. What is your favorite hue? And the child responded, Jackman. That was very clever. How about this one? In a word, describe school. Now, I know quite a few of you will agree with this, and during high school, there were quite a few days when I would agree quite readily as well, because this child's answer was hell. <laughs> Smart kid. Okay, moving along. Um, okay. On this test question, it says a child swallows a cleaning product. Why is milk often given? And the response by the child is to make them happy before they die. Which, you know, earlier today I was in kind of a chit chat with somebody and I just kept thinking, wow, you know, we probably wouldn't have nearly as many problems right now if they hadn't put so damn many warning labels on things like, you know, on bleach where it says not intended for internal consumption. Weeding, culling the herd, you know, let nature cull itself. Yeah. So, Uh, on this one, the child was supposed to fill in the blank, and he said the man pet the dog. You should not hit dogs, which, yeah. Um, okay, any more? Here we go. Why are there rings on Saturn? Because God liked it, so he put a ring on it. Okay. I thought that was rather cute. <laughs> uh, apparently this teacher, not much of a sense of humor. The question is, write an example of a risk. And the child wrote this, and the teacher checked it wrong anyway. No, I think that was very correct, by the way. Okay, uh, this guy is just, that's just silliness. I'm trying to find some that... And they're just, mm, a lot of these are visual. So you're just going to have to go through and check them out on your own. Because, yeah, visual jokes don't translate well on the radio. Sorry. Besides, it's getting late enough. I need to be getting my poo-poo together. Oops. So I can get this shared over here on realliberty.org. 
Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on a Freaker Friday evening on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10, or on the RLM Spreaker channel. Thank you all for joining in. Be sure to stick around or check back later, however you wish to do that. Grimner and Moose Girl will be on later on this evening for the Freaker's Ball, about two hours from now. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Flash a Rooney Dork and Vinnie Dork will be on with the Dork Table. So be sure to get your Dork hats on because those two, yeah, much dorkiness will ensue. On Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner's going to be jumping on the radio and he's going to play for a couple hours, play some blues for you. And there will be a rousing game of trivia going on in the chat. Obviously, I am not a speed typist, and with my slow internet, yeah, yeah, I don't get very many of them before Speedy Gonzalez Grimner or Moose Girl or Kate get them, and they're in there. They are the Speedy Gonzalez's of the trivia game in the chat. Also, directly following Grimner will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed so uh yeah all kinds of way cool stuff going on over the weekend i will be back on wednesday for the wackadoodle wednesday edition of the rocket chair and uh yeah i still got minutes left what the hell i got through that entirely too fast so now i need to go back to my pocket and see if there was something else that i stashed that maybe just maybe um hmm nope i have a lot of stuff of things that i just really don't give a shit about anymore that i need to just clean out my pocket um instagram or teaching people how to live like pioneers hmm let's see Okay, what is that? Walking might be the best exercise out there. Yeah, actually it is. Unless, you know, you're walking away from an officer when he says, stop, police. Um, yes. What's that, Vinny? Oh, you're on Tuesday at noon central for In a Perfect World. Oh, yes. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you. Uh, Tuesday at noon noon central time which is 1 p.m eastern time for in a perfect world yeah as if there's a perfect world there is one but mm. uh let me see scrolling 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 i'm trying to find something that oh okay here we go this is from the onion the onion's always fun it's from last month, but The Onion has chosen to publish an anonymous op-ed from two sources close to Trump who think their dad is the best president ever. <laughs> yeah. So, as turmoil continues to increase within the Trump White House, these essays, or this essay offers an invaluable high-level perspective into the administration's inner workings. Due to the sensitive nature of this op-ed, revealing the identities of the writers could jeopardize their positions in the administration. We believe, however, that any issues with the writers' identities or their motivations for writing this piece are overridden by the necessity of informing the public about what it's like to work for the president. That's why The Onion has chosen to publish an anonymous op-ed from two sources close to Mr. Trumpel-Stilskin, who think that their dad is just the best president ever. So, the op-ed is, right now, lots of people are mad at President Trump, but these people are dumb and wrong. We know because we know personally the president and think that our dad is the best president ever. He is good at being USA Chief Commando and sitting in the Oval Office and desk. And he is also good at giving us chocolate ice cream, which he did one time. <laughs> yeah, anonymous. Oh, 
Oh, Flash is all by his lonesome on the dork table. Oh, Flash will be Flash is a big boy. He can do it. Uh um lost at sea, huh? Well, and I got to tell you, this, my new away from the house job, every other Saturday I work and possibly um, <clears throat> more Saturdays than that just kind of depends on how often I am needed. But because mm, yes, I am not independently wealthy. And so therefore, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, hey, I am just about out of time. Let me see. Let me see if I got one more. Just one more. Maybe I can go to UPI because I do have just two minutes. Dos minutos. Uh, in their odd news. What? Okay. Man, these people with their lottery tickets. Oblivious man had one million dollar lottery ticket for four months. Well, okay. On the rare occasion when I do buy a lottery ticket and then I eventually get around to checking it. Yeah, it could be a couple months down the road before I eventually get around to checking it because I don't ever check those numbers. This Connecticut man was cleaning out his wallet and discovered a four month old Powerball ticket that turned out to be a million dollar winner. The Reading resident, Charles Dudley, told uh, Connecticut lottery officials that he bought the Powerball ticket May 2nd on a whim. I'd stopped for ice cream at the Shell station that day, and while I was there, I got a Powerball quick pick, put it in my wallet, and then forgot about it. He said it wasn't until he was cleaning out his wallet this week that he found the ticket, which was only 23 days away from expiring. It was sandwiched between some old receipts. So I checked the winning numbers on the lottery's website and couldn't believe it. Checked it over and over, and the numbers were a match. Didn't feel real, though, until I checked the location where the ticket was sold. It was where I bought my ticket. So, his ticket matched the first five numbers of the drawing, only missing the Powerball number. So, yay, Dudley. Way to go. And before... It ran out. Oh, you'd have really been upset if it was no longer valid. Damn. Oh, well. I am officially out of time now. So thank you all for listening in. Have an awesome weekend. Um, I will be popping in from time to time. But ah, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. See you in the funny papers. Good night.